Welcome. Today we're operating a flight from Portland International Airport in Portland, Oregon, to the Seattle-Tacoma International Airport in SeaTac, Washington. The short 144-mile flight takes us from 28 left in Portland, directly to Cougar, then direct Creek, for the Hawk 7 arrival at Seattle, where we expect to land on 16 right. We'll climb to only 14,000 feet. Let's join the flight as we take off from 28 left. When cleared to a fix that's outside of the area displayed on the navigation display, once you've selected the fix in the FMC, you can either change the scale of the display to check you've selected the correct fix, or change the display to plan mode, before executing the change. It is good practice, to keep the scale of the navigation display, to a range that shows the fix you are going to. It's also good practice to keep the heading bug centered on the desired track as an additional visual reference. Let's change the cruise speed to 320 knots. And descent speed to 290 knots and 250 knots below 10,000 feet subject to any restrictions on the arrival. Now is a good time to review the arrival and once again check for any speed and or altitude restrictions and to note the bottom altitude, which will set on the MCP once we've been cleared to descend on the arrival. We can set up for the ILS to 16 right using the chart's briefing strip. As always, we create a two-mile ring around the final approach fix for situation awareness. We can set the minimums of 615 feet. Let's do a landing assessment. We can import the destination airport and select the expected runway. The aircraft parameters can be set. We'll use flaps 30, have packs on, and take credit for the thrust reversers. After importing the weather, we can calculate the distance required, which is 5,836 feet. To show the importance of making an assessment, let's change brake selection to level 2. 
It increases the landing distance required to 7,300 feet, the majority of the runway. We'll stick with auto brakes level 3. Let's listen to the approach brief. What's your threats on the approach? It's a shorter runway, and we'll have two runways to cross after landing. I agree, we'll use auto brakes 3 and keep the lights on and a good lookout when we cross those runways. Okay, it's the ILS to 16 right, chart 21 3, February 22nd, 2019, effective February 28th. That's what I've got. Frequency 110.75. 164 degrees inbound. 1900 at Finca, down to 615 feet, with a touchdown elevation of 415 feet. MSA is 3,400 to the northwest, 2,200 to the southwest, and 6,400 feet to the east. If we go missed, we'll climb to 5,000 feet and hold as published. Alsef 2 lighting system with Pappy on the right side. We need an RVR of 1,800 feet or half a mile visibility. The weather's better than that. The runway is 8,500 feet long. We need 5,836 feet. It'll be a left turn off with two runways to cross. Any questions or additions? No, none. To slow to 210 knots, flaps have been extended to 1 degree. We're given a descent to 3,200 feet. Since that's not on the arrival, we'll descend using level change, which gives us an idle thrust descent. We're cleared to Bugney, and for the ILS approach to 16 right. We select VNAV, then reopen the speed window to manually set speeds. We can now set 1,900 feet for Finca. With the final approach fix next, we select approach mode.
were established on the localizer and glide slope, so set the missed approach altitude of 5,000 feet. It's good practice to briefly remind yourself of the actions in the event of a missed approach. Minimums. Three hundred. Minimums. One hundred. Fifty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. 